Merry Christmas, everyone. It's finally here. You guys have been asking, calling, texting, messaging me for, you know, wanting to see this. And I am so glad you guys were able to join me on this whole journey. You guys have been so patient, but dun 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 dun. Enjoy. So I got tagged in a video a few months ago and it was of a girl at a fair and she had her teeth, you know, that were clearly like in front of her face, like everything was out here. And she had a lot of extra bone growth and then her teeth. And she actually stopped into a booth where this guy does these caricature drawings. And, you know, naturally it's something that where you take your most pronounced quality and, and he will exaggerate whatever that trait is. And hers just happened to be her teeth. So when he turned the drawing around, you know, it was just kind of this moment you can tell in her face of like, you know, probably a nightmare that she's never been able to get out of. And she took it so well. And I think that's what drew me in is that somebody that had such, you know, an unhideable trait and she was smiling, you know, and I'd never seen that before. Everybody I'd ever seen that had something of that, you know, magnitude had learned how to create a whole world around covering it. And for her to just be smiling through it, you know, really just moved me completely to the point to where I just reached out to her and said, you know, if no one else is gonna fix this, like, can't hurt to try. I've been teased my whole life, so I have tough skin and it like does hurt. But at the same time, I got this amazing blessing from Dr. Kenny, this amazing opportunity to come out and do something for myself for once and actually take care of myself. I think the hardest thing for me leading up to her treatment date was how am I going to do it? You know, I've never seen or done anything that fixed that kind of a problem before. But in my head, I just kept thinking, I mean, you can't screw up something that's already that bad. Like, you can only go up, you know? And that, that's a terrible way to go into things, but that's just who I am. Like, if you don't try, then it'll stay the same. Hi. Hey, how are you? So she showed up and, you know, it was really exciting to see her. And all the while, the entire time, like, my faith in myself just had to just be there as a passenger only in this experience because I didn't want my brain to get in the way and tell me like you can't do this. Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay, going down. So I just kind of, you know, found myself, you know, leaning her back in the chair, you know, numbing her up and then all the while just letting my gift take over. It's not set up. Okay. Sure, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, Brianna was nervous and I was, all I could do was just do my best to comfort her along the way and just let her know that I was there and let her know that it would be okay, you know, and that um, sometimes you don't really need to take the pain away. You just need to make sure that they, you know, feel, in a case like this, I think the most, the craziest part was just all the twists and turns. Every time I got deeper into this story, it got, more and more deserving. The more I got to know her, I was just shocked. I hated my dad, I despised him for all this shit he put my mom through. And then he moved on, as soon as they got divorced, moved on, got remarried. That hurt me even more because he chose her over his own kids and pretty much told us that to our face, like, I'm going with her. I'm going to raise her kids, not you guys anymore. So at a young age, 11 years old, I got super depressed. I was a bulimic, I was anorexic, and all of this stuff that my mom never knew because I didn't want to put more issues onto my mom than what she already had on her own plate. So my mom was a drug addict. She, since I was a kid, was a druggie. As I got older and I went into middle school and I got more teased, I used to be called a bird. When COVID hit, I lost my parents. I lost my mom, I lost my dad, I lost my grandma, I lost my brother. It all hit at once. And ever since then, I've been alone. Yeah, I didn't know any of that. At the end of the day, I always know where I come from. I never got a handout like this. Like people always say, oh, this is a handout. She doesn't deserve it. And it's like, I 
you don't ask. I think the one thing that set Brianna apart was just her humility. You know, she didn't expect anything. She didn't ask for anything. Um, her whole life, she's just been smiling through it and smiling through the pain. Do you have a ponytail? Mm -hmm. I you have a ponytail? Yeah, do you have a ponytail? Get one? Yeah. You getting it for me? For you? Yeah, I wanted it for oh, my ass. Yeah. Thanks. Is it even going to work? Well, I don't know if I know. Can you do it for me? I don't know what hair you want me to put up. There, just like that. That's cool. <laughs> All right, look. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I just saw somebody that needed my help, but getting her and having her sit down and just talk to her about her life, and I couldn't believe what one person can go through in such a short amount of time to just leave, like, to lose her entire family and have everything that she'd ever known taken away from her. Like, it was... To give her back her smile is, you know, to give anybody back their smile in a situation like that's all we can ask for is to you know you want people you know that their smile is is something that is going to make them happy and so gosh just to think that people would charge money for that though like dad always gets these like crazy cases coming in and I kind of just like jump in whenever he tells me to so he had shown me the video of her and like the whole caricature thing and I was like oh cool like I'm excited to have that case come in eventually because I like things that are just different and just bigger but um I just was like if I get asked to assist great if not like I'll survive and so um we started it like I think we started it like what three yeah, Maybe she flew in. She flew in. She flew in, and I and I had to. Um, I mean, we had to start truly late in the day and go on. Yeah, that. and usually when I have to stay super late, I get like antsy. Thankfully, the whole time that we were doing it, I was just having fun. Like it was honestly one of the funnest cases ever. The poor thing, she had to sit in the chair for like we didn't get done till like seven thirty, eight o'clock. And we all just had like the best attitude while doing it. Poor thing though, she started crying because it was just, it was just a long day. It's just a long procedure for someone to have to sit through and she just stuck it out like no other. We're getting there. So, she's a trooper. Life just feels like it's been knocking me down left and right since everything happened. I feel like I could never catch a break and I never get a break in life. And honestly, this opportunity gave me that break for once. It gives me a different change of pace. It gives me another reason to know there is still good out there. It is still worth living. It is still worth pushing yourself and going forward instead of just calling it quits right off the bat. Just seeing how happy she was with the end of it is just kind of like what makes it all worth it in the end. You would never, ever, ever, ever look at her and think that there was anything like that that happened to her because she is such a positive person. Like she just literally can light up a room as soon as she walks in. And there's not very many people that do that. So like, and you don't, she says you don't meet people like him, but we don't also meet people like her. And she has no clue, like how much she has affected so many people in the office without even knowing it. You know, I heard after I reached out to her that she was approached by other dentists who were wanting to help as well. But when she actually asked them, you know, how, like, how are you going to fix it? And they really didn't have an answer back. And so I think the in most interesting part about that is that they all discouraged her though from just coming to me. And, you know, I do, I do put myself out there and show the kind of radical dentistry like I am willing to attempt and I do have success like doing it all. And I just think it's really interesting how other doctors and other, you know, professionals that have been doing this, that they're actually discouraging people from coming to me. And I don't, there's not a lot of sense to be made of that other than just professional, um, I mean, they're peanut butter and jealous. He's motherfucking peanut butter and jealous. I don't know. I just think it's a really, it, it's just really shitty that like nobody wants to break the mold of dentistry. I would have been nervous if I would have known she was going to see anyone else to get this fixed. And then 
You know, there's a lot of dentists who will just say, yeah, I can fix that. And then they do things, they'll pull all of her teeth though, like all of them. And they say, sorry, you know, you just need implants. And to me, I just don't think that pulling every tooth and going that route was the best route because I've kind of prided myself in showing what you can do with what God gave you. A lot of dentists just want to pull teeth and just put in dentures and do everything like that. And not all the time you want to pull all your teeth out. I think my main approach going into this was I knew that the front four teeth were just like gonna go. They were in front of her, you know, when we have the bottom teeth down here and the front are out, in front and out, I knew that they were gonna be, I was gonna be removing them. Um, I think the biggest thing was how do I make the gums that they were being held in, how do I make those go up and back? And so I created two incisions over here and over here and I reflected her gums up and then I, I took, after taking out those four front teeth, I clipped the bone back with some snippers and then took a drill and I smoothed it all back down and then I put the gums back and I sewed them down. And that way I had a new arch form for all of the front teeth by using the, these teeth over here and these teeth over here. And then I just manually connected this dot to this dot at a much more narrow arch. And so it just brought everything that was out here all of a sudden in, and it happened to be perfect. When it's more difficult for us to do, it's more enjoyable in my opinion for us to do because it's just different. Like it's not the same thing that we get to do every single day. So that's why I enjoy when he like has big cases come in that we do for free because most people can't pay for it. And we get to save it rather than like extracting all the teeth and giving them dentures, which I never really like doing because it's just not as satisfying at the end. I was extremely, proud of myself. I think the problem with the world of dentistry today is that nobody is willing to do anything that they don't get completely overtrained for to the point to where it's like nobody then will ever learn to do it. You know, um, it, it, there's this mentality and philosophy that like don't try anything that you can't guarantee. And I just think that if we keep making that the standard of care, then nobody's gonna ever get anything. With, of course, with a case like Brianna, that's all I saw was a challenge. And so my eyes lit up and I immediately just had zero doubt that I could fix it. It's funny that she asked all of the other doctors how they were going to fix it, but with me, she never did. And I just think that that level of trust, you know, in me to know that there's, I'll just find a way and it'll be a way that you're going to be the most happy with. You know, my interest is always the patients first. You know, what would I want in my mouth if I were them? And with that understanding, I just, I, I make a lot more choices that are patient-based for the long-term and the today too. And too many dentists just don't wanna just factor in, you know, what they're gonna be. I mean, it's crazy to me when somebody wants to pull a front tooth and put an implant in and then it goes gray up in the gums and they say, oh, well, that's, that's, that's just normal. It's like, well, you didn't tell me I was gonna get a gray gum up here from the implant. And then, so to me, just not giving all the information to me has always, has always been a problem. So I, I, I kind of look at, is she really gonna be smiling in the end? because she loves her smile. This morning when I was leaving for the flight, I looked at myself in the mirror one last time. I was like, this is the last time I'm gonna have this smile. I was like, I gotta take it all in. And before I knew it, I saw what was looking back at me and I was stunned. And that was really surreal because I just don't know or didn't know I could do it. I'm just gonna get you some glossy glouse. <laughs> My dress. together. Lips. He's just a You do with your damn finger. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot of things with my damn finger. I don't want to know that. Oh. No, that's dude. I love your daughter. You don't care. I don't want to see. Oh my gosh! That's pretty incredible.
it was just amazing having so much support going through a process like this and everybody genuinely cared so i think that was my favorite part not just say not just changing one person's life but showing the world that this is just the way it should be you know we should just help other people we should just love one another at the end of the day and and if we can do that a little bit and we can all join in on something like that who knows what the world could really be like today yeah they looked super super good like super natural like she was able to smile well like they fit her face really well and usually the temps it's kind of hard to do that with because we hand make them and then um but when she was when you, we finished them they looked i was like wasn't expecting that Next. What? That's so insane. Oh my god. That's so crazy. I'm gonna cry. Mm -hmm. That's so crazy. Talk. That's so like, oh my god. I don't think I've ever seen myself like that, ever. Yeah. That's... Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's insane. I don't think I've ever pictured myself like this. No. Uh-uh. Oh my gosh. That's your smile. That's so crazy. <laughs> oh, you did dress up. I never saw that picture, you damn hoe. I don't, I'm not allowed to post anything. I said you can send shit to me though, huh? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Gosh. But then, that was the only other time I dressed up. Yeah. That, that was looks... my Christmas party. For yeah. My... Mm, that's the overboard dress up part. Mm. Looks so good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Dr. King. <laughs> How'd you like the video? It was really good, but what happens when people start asking for free work? I just block them. <laughs>